So in this lesson, we're going to continue talking about filters, and now we're going to build some custom filters for ourselves. Our setup is, as usual, the input, it's mirroring the model right afterwards, and then we have some dummy data in the scope. Recall that a filter is acting as a black box modifier of whatever's passed to it. So we're going to build two custom filters in this lesson. So the first custom filter, we're going to build something that's going to limit the number of characters that is in a string. So how do we do this? Well, we're going to declare the filter in the exact same way that we would a controller. So app.filter. Let's call the filter car limit. Same as a controller. There's a function. Filters are going to return another function. The argument to this function is the input of whatever is before the pipe operator in the filter. And then after this are the optional or non-optional arguments that we will pass it, depending on how it's constructed. In this filter, we can't assume that input is going to exist and we can't assume that length is going to exist. So if length is not set, then if input is not set, we're just gonna return an empty string. That's just the basic stuff. Now to the actual filter. So if length of the input is less than or equal to the length that we provided, then we're going to return the input unchanged. Otherwise, we are going to truncate the length and then add on an ellipsis. These are just setting, handling if the parameters are of unexpected form then the base case where we don't want to truncate it, and then the case where we do. This is getting a string as the first parameter, and it's always returning a string. So that's how this filter is working. So now, if we want to actually implement this, all we have to do is call our filter normally. And recall, since we are scoping this as a global filter and application, we don't have to do anything extra here. Then, if we refresh, we should see that it's limited to 10 characters. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, zero. And then any more than this, it creates an ellipsis and adds and removes it as necessary. So this is a working custom filter that we just built. So great, this is working fine. This handles the case of what happens when you want to filter a string. What about an array? Well, for an array, it doesn't really change. So it's the same structure. So we're going to go app.filter. And then let's create a filter. Let's use this dummy data that we still have up here. So let's say we only want users who are above the age of 21 who can drink in the United States. So we'll say can drink. It's a function that returns a function. And here, we're gonna use a similar format to before. So the, let's say data this time. And then min age. Then our filter is going to take an array that's passed to it, which in this case is this entire array. And we want to return a subset of that array. So we're going to do that as follows. Set up the return array. Set the default to 21. And then we're going to iterate through the data array. We're going to get the current element in the array. If it's greater or equal than the min age, then we are going to push the new value onto the array. Whatever we ended up putting in the array, we're going to return it. It will only remove the elements in data that are less than 21. So in the view, let's set the repeater. We'll say user in mydata.array. And we're going to filter it against can drink. And this should be working. Let's just count with this out since we don't need it right now. So if this is done properly, this is going to return only the users that are aged over 21. So let's refresh. So as we see here, we can see all the users in the array that are over the age of 21, as the 12-year-old John has been taken out. This works pretty well, and we can see that when we add a specific value to this, say 25, this should also filter out Joe now, since we're actually setting the parameter, and certainly does. As you might suspect, you don't actually have to hard code these values in. You can utilize them from variables such as models. The string that we're ending in, we're going to add as the limit to the can drink. So if we refresh, 
Now we can see that we're actually going to be setting. So the youngest is 12, so we set it to 10. Everyone shows up. If we set it to 100, no one shows up. 50, only over 50. So these are two ways of creating and using custom filters in AngularJS. They're pretty powerful, as you can imagine, because you are compartmentalizing some modification functionality that you're going to be using a lot in the views. And if you do these correctly and efficiently, they can really make your views nice and clean and nice and modular.